In this video, we are going to cover some of the practical steps or tickets related to domain services. And I'm sure you have went through this video and you understand uh, different type of setups when it comes to domain. So let's go ahead and open your lab just like how you have been doing it for the other chapters. Uh, on the bottom, there's going to be a launch lab button. Go ahead and launch your lab. Once your lab is open, go ahead and hide the left panel as we're using a custom setup for this type of uh, uh, video. So that's not going to be supported by the support. So make sure to follow everything step by step. Go ahead and turn on all of your devices in this lab, including PLAB SA01. Now, in this scenario, when you're working with domain services, uh, it's really something that you are not going to do if you are going to be hired by a company as a junior sysadmin. You're not going to go there and start creating domain controllers or uh, adding domain controllers at this level if you're a junior level sysadmin. But maybe later on, you may be given some sort of project based on whatever the need is for that company. So in the beginning, if you want to try creating a fresh domain controller, then you can try using the PLAB SA01, which is a standalone server. And basically, once you click on it, this is where you have this server available. You can see there's no domain. And to verify, you already know how to do this basic check. You can go to the system and just check if the machine is currently attached to or joined to any domain um, in this environment. So let's go ahead and check that. If the setup uh, screen is hung like this, you can go ahead and close this and just open it from here by local server you can see it says right here work group and by clicking on it it can take you to the same place that we want it to go so it says right here work group that verifies that this machine is not a part of a domain so actually you can use this to create a full forest level domain meaning it's going to be a single domain uh, from scratch no other uh, domains are being attached or anything like that so what you can do here, you can go to the manage, add roles, and go to next, next. And you must be wondering who decide the names and IP addresses and licenses. Now, when you go to the company, they will tell you exactly how they use the names. So that's something you will be given. And then you will be also given an IP address in the beginning if you're new to the company. Later on, they will tell you how you need to find IP addresses or what to use to get that IP address. So we're going to click next over here to create a brand new fresh domain controller. We're going to use Active Directory Domain Services. And on the right side, you can actually study this a little bit. Go to Google, use ChatGPT AI and ask them questions, ask, ask AI questions um, wherever you feel like uh, you need to ask, uh, you know, something in detail. So go ahead and add the feature, click next, and then go ahead and click next again and click next and click install. So what you're doing right now, you're just creating a fresh domain controller on PLAB SA01 uh, server. So here you will see promote this server to a domain controller. And once you get to that point, that's where you make the decision that do you want to add this domain controller to an existing domain? We could add this to basically this server to this domain, which is already running, or we can create a brand new, uh, you know, new domain to an existing forest. We can create a domain, basically not a con domain controller. So that's also we can do. Or, or we can do a, add a full brand new forest. So we're going to do a full brand new forest in this SA01 server. So let's go ahead and name it something like corp.jobskillshare.org. And that's a root domain name. And of course, this is where you will type the password as you have seen the video and the explanation of this type of uh, setup. So make sure to go back to your video for understanding purpose. And when you click next, as mentioned that each domain controller 
uh, when you're running it like this, like a full standalone domain controller, then you need a DNS for sure. So it's gonna um, basically add that by default. In later la labs, you are going to learn about DNS and DHCP and things like that. So it's detected the NetBIOS. So we're gonna click next. And then we're going to click next again. If you want to get the PowerShell script and you want to automate this process, you can click on view script and then you can basically use this uh, directly on the PowerShell if you want to run it that way later on. That's another way to do things uh, fast. So we got that info right now. We're going to click next again and basically we're going to uh, install this domain controller. So let's go ahead and install. So once this uh, process is finished, you're going to see that it's going to automatically sign you out and this uh, machine will be restarted. Now, this is important right here. The lab is set up to uh, log you in automatically by using the administrator account and password. So when you are waiting for this machine, it may automatically log you in if it works. If not, then you need to be sitting in front of the machine by just going here and clicking on the console. That's if things are not working. So let's see what happens and then we can move forward. Keep in mind that when you do this process, the machine will take its time naturally because you're putting so many different services and policies that are getting applied right now. So in the beginning, the first time when a domain controller restart, it takes its time. So after a few minutes, you are going to see that it's going to log in. But let's say uh, you have any issues with the automatic login, uncheck this and go to console mode. And that's like you're just looking at the domain controller. If you're sitting in front of it, usually it's going to be like this when you have your own uh, you know, server running under some virtualization or hardware. So then you can basically use all control delete, which is right here. And you can see that we have corp slash administrator. This tells me that this is the domain controller is already running right now. Before we didn't have this information. Now we have it. So I can actually use the administrator account just like that. And the same lab password that you have been using. So I can get back to the domain. And if I come over here, you see on the left side, we have ADDS DNS. Uh, we didn't add a Hyper-V, this was already there. So if I click on tools, you see the Active Directory users and computer is available. And here you go, the corp.jobskillshare.org is now available as well. So if you want to now test adding a machine or adding users to this domain, you can practice that that's just the active directory uh, skills at this point right now at the basic level so you can add a, an account to this active directory and let's call it sysadmin1 and we're going to do sysadmin1 here and password And we can make this sysadmin a domain admin. You have already done this in the previous labs as well. So now this sysadmin have a lot of uh, good access. So here's the thing. Uh, if I ask you this question, this sysadmin that I just added right here, because it's a part of Active Directory, do you also think that this also got added to PLAB DC01? Is your answer yes or no? If your answer is yes, that's wrong. Remember, this is totally separate domain controller that we have created right now, and it has nothing to do with PLAB DC01. And that's why we created the forest, totally separate domain. So we created sysadmin1, it will not be in DC01. So you can go ahead and check it in the PC PLAB DC01 Active Directory. And first, it's gonna be totally different domain, and it will not you will not find whatever you add if you're doing this lab and you added that uh, user right here you will not find it at pc plab dc01 now to test if we can add a machine to this domain we can pick one of these machines let's say plab win 10 which you know that is connected to 
PLAB DC01 but uh, I know for sure that at this level you know how to unjoin a computer from one domain and join it to another domain this is something that you should probably know from the IT support level but if you don't let's try that first so what we are doing here if you come to the computers you see we don't have any computers available this means we don't have any computers to manage and we are going to basically manage PLAB intent from corp.jobsclashare.org so let's go ahead and click on that so once you click on that you see that it is already joined to a domain called practice labs so we're going to basically go to these three dots uncheck this click on console mode so you're going to see this screen now the reason i did the console mode is that when you unjoin the machine and join it to another domain you may not be able to connect but uh, it's best to just use console mode so we can see even if the machine have some sort of network issues you can still connect to it so we're going to log in now with the lab password that you already know and there you go we're inside this machine let's go to settings and in settings you see if you scroll down it's already uh, joined to the domain by going to system info so you you can see that it is joined to the practice lab domain or in your case if you have a brand new machine it's going to say work group so it's going to be the same process we're going to go here to change settings and you see we have a domain available right here now the best practice is basically first remove this machine and put it on work group. just type work group like that and it's going to say leaving this domain blah 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 let's go ahead and do that so now you have removed this machine from the domain and it's going to ask you to restart the machine that's fine we are in the console mode so we are going to see the screen as basically it's, it's going to show only one user uh, on the screen and that will be the administrator so here you go as i mentioned it's going to only show one user that's what it is admin and we log in with the admin password uh, that the lab password is the same password so now we are in the admin account we're going to go back to systems so what you're learning you're also learning a skill unjoining a machine to domain joining it back and sometimes you lose connections from the domain and you have to do this same process to get it back and working on the domain so here you go it's on work group we're going to go to change settings again go to change and here you're going to type corp dot job skill share dot org oops typo so now we are seeing this uh message okay that's fine and as a sysadmin you should never close message like that if you type something correctly corp dot job skill share dot org you always need to look at the details now the details clearly tell, tell us that there was an error where the dns name does not exist so what we need to do here first we need to make sure it's corp.jobskillshare.org and then the second thing we need to do is to go to the plab sa01 and basically go to cmd and type the ip config command which you already know this from very basic stuff so the dns of this machine is what 192.168.0.4 that is what we are gonna have to use because if i go to the settings here and it says the permission so what you can do here you can type this command or, or you can type it this way you can actually run I'll go to run like that and just click on run and here you're going to type ncpa.cpl so then you bypass that little you know different way of getting to it so here we can actually go to the virtual ethernet and check ipv4 and you can see it is loop back, loop back address which means that whatever ip address of this machine is going to be the dns of this server so this is what it means if somebody 
uh, show this in front of you in the test and say, what is this address? If this is a loopback address. Sometimes uh, you can also put this in your web browser and that is just, you know, getting back to this IP basically. So we need to basically go back to PLAB Win 10 and in our DNS, we need to confirm that we have that uh, set up to that address. So Ethernet properties, IPv4, and you see how it's uh, 192.168, and this should be um, 4, I believe, and let's go ahead and double confirm that. Sometimes this can take a little time. So there you go. 192.168.0.4. Perfect. This is the PLAB SA01 domain that we have created. And it is also 04. We're going to click OK. Cancel it. And uh, go back to our screen where we left. Click OK. And boom, there you go. So now you're telling this machine to talk to this domain controller via DNS that you just forced it, right? So we're gonna use a sysadmin account that we have created in that domain, the new domain, and let's see if that works. So there you go. So what you just did, you added a computer to this new domain. You actually removed this machine from this domain, put it back on Workgroup, then you added this machine to the new domain, and now the new domain, whoever is in charge of it, whoever are the admins are have now control over PLAB Win 10. This machine do not have any control at this point. So I can go back to that uh, server and there you go. We can go back to the Active Directory, go to the computers and if you refresh here that machine lab is available right there so in this lab we have learned how to create a brand new forest uh, domain controller and then we have also um, you know you added a user domain uh, give it domain rights then we also went out there removed this machine from the, the previous domain and then we have joined it back to the new domain and everything looks to be working fine and in the next video we're going to do a different method where we're going to to uh, go to the PLAB DM01 and actually create a second domain and join it to the PLAB DC01. So that is what we are going to do in our next uh, uh, Ticket Lab video. Thank